welcome to the farmhouse. Today I want to show you our homeschool area. My name is Deanne. I am a mama to four. We are a homesteading family and we also homeschool our kids. We have four kiddos. Henley is four and the boys are three and Marisol just turned one. So we homeschool Henley and the boys and Marisol kind of just hangs out and is along for the ride. We have found some awesome resources and an awesome setup for our homeschool that we can't wait to share with you today. showing you everything in our homeschool area, I do want to give you a little bit of background. I taught kindergarten and first grade for eight years in our public school system. I have a master's degree in education and I'm also a board certified teacher. So lots of experience in teaching. After I left the classroom, I also ran an in-home daycare. So over the years, I have accumulated a lot of things in the whole education realm and the education space. And you don't have to have all of these things to have a successful homeschool. We just have them all because I had them when I taught and I just haven't gotten rid of them. So a lot of things that you see today aren't really necessary, but we love them and we just have them. There are a couple other things I'm going to share with you that we could not homeschool without. So, to get started, I'm going to show you, this is our table where we do all of our seat work. Um, I have three chairs that sit across here so the three kids can all sit at the same time to do their independent work and I'm able to stand behind them and guide them if they need any help. A lot of our independent work is done, at least our reading independent, I love Explode the Code which is what Henley is using right now to work on her letters and sounds. Now, I don't use Explode the Code in the actual book. I go through and I will take all of the pages out of this book and put them into a binder with sheet protectors so that she can write on the sheet protectors with dry erase markers. And then we use magic erasers to erase it all off. Our county requires a portfolio for homeschooling, so I will every now and then, probably like once a day, take a picture of two of the worksheets she's done. I always make sure on the pic the sheets that I'm going to take a picture of, she writes her name at the top, and then I will write the date real quick so that I have everything documented. So another must-have for us are dry erasers and, or sorry, magic erasers and dry erase markers. Now. Some things I don't always put in sheet protectors. I love using these dry erase pack pockets. These were from Target in the dollar section probably when school started, but you can also order them on Amazon, and I will put that link below. Something else that I love to use when we homeschool and love to use at our independent work table is mini erasers, and this is just one of many containers of mini erasers that I have. These are great for counting and sorting and building things. And I have so many of them that it always is like new and fresh because it's a new eraser that the kids can use. And then something else that I absolutely love to use at our independent table and use with the kids when we're working is this is a cookie sheet that I got at the dollar store. And it has, I taped an alphabet mat to it. And I'll leave a link below where you can get this alphabet mat for free in my resource library. And then these are magnetic letters. And the boys, because they're just learning their letters, they will match the letters. So match the magnetic letter to the letter that is on the mat. So they'll go through and match them all. And then they have to tell me what letters. Henley. She's moved on from that, and she will use the letters to build words. So if I say cat, then she'll pull off the letters to build the word cat. So this is very versatile and very easy 
to make and we love using this in our homeschool. So over, this is our table, and then right off to the side behind me, this is all, or not all, this is a lot of my teaching resources. So each kid has their very own bucket with their name on it, with their workbooks inside. It also has every kid's portfolio, more games, books. This is kind of like my go-to area when I am looking for a resource. Now we also use ABC Mouse when we do our homeschool and the kids will do that one child at a time does that while I work with another kiddo and then another kiddo is doing a center activity so we kind of do a rotation and I wrote a blog post all on how we do our schedule and our rotations and I will link that below so you can kind of see that. But I was finding that when they were working on the iPad they were getting very distracted because the person at the table who was supposed to be focusing on me and what they were working on were always watching the iPad. So I took a box and I took it apart. So you can see here was the box. I took it apart and I made this study corral that sits on the table and the iPad sits right in the middle of it and it's off over in the corner at the end of the table. So the person who's working on the iPad can't see what the other kiddo at the table is doing and the kiddo at the table cannot see what the person on the iPad is doing. So this has really helped us stay focused. So just a little simple hack if you're trying to keep kids focused. Because I ran a daycare, um, we have lots of bulletin boards down here. So our bulletin boards have just posters and things that I had when I taught in the classroom. We love butterflies, we love monarchs. So of course I had to have our monarch poster up and I'll change them out every now and then if I see fit, but most of the time they just stay the same. So this is where we do all of our independent work, all of our art projects and all of those things. I'm going to take you now over to the area where we do our whole group lessons. So this is the area where we do all of our whole group lessons. So we will read stories here. We'll do our math lessons here. And it just kind of separates from our table work and our seat work and it kind of gives the kids some time to like move around. I do all of our lessons. I kind of plan them out all in Google Slides so that each slide is an activity that goes along with the objective for the day. I did this when I taught in the classroom and it really just made it, it just made everything flow. So I do the same thing for our homeschool. So our math lessons are all in one set of slides. Our reading lessons are in all in one set of slides. We do calendar on the slides and we also do science, social studies, and our phonics. And they're all different slides. And I store everything on Google Drive. Just makes it simple and easy for us. And then if we're traveling, I always have access to all of our lessons. You can find my lessons on Teachers Pay Teachers. I run the store Waking Up in Kindergarten. So I will leave that link below if you want to check out some of our lessons. I'm constantly adding new things and new products and different activities that we're doing in our homeschool, but I also add products and resources that I used when I taught in the classroom. So going back to our lessons and them being digital lessons, I have my MacBook and all of the lessons are, like I said, on Google Drive. And then I screen share my MacBook to Apple TV, which is connected to the TV, so that the kids can see the lesson up on the TV and then I can control it on my computer. This also allows us to really easily access any YouTube videos that I might be using in a lesson or any National, Graf National, Graphic National Geographic videos that I we're using. Just makes it really easy to find different resources really quickly. And we love to promote curiosity in our homeschool. So if Hunter has a question about a, what is a mouse and what does a mouse look like, I can real quick do a quick search and I can put it up on the screen for them to see. 
I have three amazing kiddos, but they are also very, very wiggly when it comes to doing circle time or anything like that. So what I did is I took an old yoga mat and I cut it into three sections and made mats for the carpet. So when we sit on the carpet for any whole group time, each kiddo has their own mat and they have to sit and give five. Now, five things ready is something I used in the classroom and I've kind of pulled over into our homeschool. So give me five is lips are silent, your hands are still, your feet are still, your ears are listening, and your eyes are either on me or they're on the screen. And this has really, really helped keep them focused and keep them sitting still on the carpet. And then the kids earn bucket fillers, which are little gems that they fill their buckets with. And then once their bucket is full, they get a prize. And I can show you their bucket fillers when I show you our centers. But this is our whole group area. The kids love to dance and this gives them lots of room to dance. I also should probably mention that our homeschool area is in our basement, which is also where I ran our daycare out of. So they use about, probably about a third of our basement space. The other third is storage and my craft area, and then the other third is granddad's shop. So it's enough space, but not too, too much space. You might be asking, what is Marisol doing during this time while I'm working with the big kids on their schoolwork? Normally we just let Marisol run around, she pulls her toys out and she'll play with them. Sometimes she'll come over and she'll dance with the kids when they're doing a dancing activity. Most often she will sit down and she will read with us when we're reading a book. But she's a little too young to be doing any of the activities so we really just let her explore and be curious about what is in her environment. So I had mentioned that we do a rotation with the kids during our homeschool period and I wanted to give you kind of a quick look about what this looks like. So this is our center storage system. It's a Trofast from Ikea which I will link below and then each drawer, let's see if I can find one that I did today. So each drawer has a different activity in it. Today we were working with tangrams and shapes, so I put the tangrams and come up some of our shape puzzles in this drawer. And then when the kids go to, we call them yellow bin time, they can pick one of these activities to do independently. This is a mix of math activities and reading activities. These, here's an example of a reading one. So these are winter vocabulary puzzles that the kids can do. and just these are just fun ways to reinforce the skills that we have been talking about during our like whole group and small group time they kids also do have a play kitchen here and they use this play kitchen during free play time so normally we start our homeschool day around 9 by i would say like 11 15 11 30 we are basically done all of our instruction and then the kids have about an hour, I'd say probably about an hour to 45 minutes to just play. And sometimes if it's really cold outside or if it's raining, they will play down here. They have a play kitchen down here. They have tons of toys down here. Or if it's a really nice day, they will go outside and play on their playground. So I have one more thing I wanna show you in our homeschool area and that is our book boxes. And it looks just like this, but it's green. But hold on one minute, I have to move the camera for you to see it. So these are our book boxes. So during our homeschool time, the kids do what we call is read to self, which is a 15 to 20 minute reading time where they read independently. Now my definition of reading is that they can read the pictures, read the words, or they could read both. So even at a very young age, I think the boys were like two and a half when I started this, they could do it because they were just reading the pictures. And it was so cute to sit and watch Garrett like point to the pictures and point out everything in it and tell his own story. Now it might not have been exactly what the book was about, but he was still telling a story to himself. So these are our book boxes that have all of the books in them. I can link below 
another post that I have on how we do read to self and how I kind of introduce it and set it up but it really fosters and encourages that independent reading which is so important to learning so that is that and then the bottom bin is just some extra coloring books on the top is this blue basket is all of my resources for the day so I put all of my worksheets in here all of the books I need for the week and then as much as I said I wasn't going to do this as a homeschool mom I had to do a finished work basket because the papers were just piling up and it was driving me crazy so I have a finished work basket that I will go through about once a month I pull everything out I hole punch it all and put it all in binders so that when it comes time for our homeschool review I have everything in a binder ready to go to show so I hope you have enjoyed seeing our homeschool area. If you are interested in any of the resources that I use during homeschool, please check out my Teachers Pay Teachers store, Waking Up in Kindergarten, and I will leave some links below for some other blog posts that I have related to homeschooling, and I know that I'll be doing another homeschool video soon. So thanks for following along. Thank mm -hmm. you.